See it? Yeah, it's definitely solid. Dr. Matriciano is surprised to find that Jeff's tissue has attached itself to the object. It looked like it was encapsulated in uh, organic material that was actually attached to Jeff's body. So there was a little bit of a tugging to get it out there. That's it. Yeah, we got it. Go left for a second. That's it. The size was surprising of the object. It was more, it appeared more flat and roundish and I was really surprised that something of that size was generating a signal outside of my body. So it's in the serum. Okay. I'm just curious to see what happens, like many are, now that it's out, what changes? Yeah, the next step with this will be to get it to the lab to begin running our tests on it. When the team has the implant analyzed, there it is. they discover something no one had ever expected. It almost looks like a tiny meteorite. Thank you, Roger. After successfully removing an alleged alien implant from the leg of Jeff Harvey, the team conducts tests to determine if it still emits an unusual radio frequency as it did before. Tell me about the radio frequency test. The radio frequency actually canceled and stopped. The implant is no longer emitting a signal. Whether or not it's been turned off or been told not to work anymore or been grounded out, the frequencies of this type of object means there's much more implication to the object than what meets the eye. Hey, Richard. I brought the sample that we discussed. You want to show us the, uh, the optical microscope? Sure. The next step is to analyze the object itself. Is it something that can be identified, or is it an anomalous object? The team takes the sample to Richard Matson of SEAL Labs in El Segundo, California. With 36 years experience, the company is one of the leading independent analysis laboratories in the country. In order to take a scientific approach to this, we have to see actually uh, what this thing is, uh, submit it for metallurgical and biological testing, and see if we do have anything here. The sample is pretty small. It's only about one to two millimeters across. And what, what are you looking for at this point in time? The geometry, the shape, the color, the surface features, surface texture. Just it's a good place to start. So it's irregular in shape. It looks like it's black and brown in color. It almost looks like a, a tiny meteorite. Any fracture lines or? No, no. Nothing. It doesn't look man-made or, or manufactured. Under the optical microscope at 40x magnification, we got a great sense of what it, what it looks like. The object has two distinct areas, a light inner layer and a dark outer shell. I do look at the outside surface and it did appear to be blackened or charred, if you want to say. You could be looking at rust. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Oxidation, yeah. But a closer look reveals a third area, an unusual protrusion on the object. It appears to be something that's dried, gel-like that we're calling the fin, because it kind of looks like a fin coming off the side. And I'm very curious to know, you know, what's this made of? So this is a scanning electron microscope. Right here we have a, an electron source which shoots electrons down vertically at the sample. We can scan the sample in X and Y. We can get X-ray diffraction, which will give us the information about the elements that are in the sample. It's a nice piece of equipment. Yes. It is. There it is. Can we get the x-ray off of this sort of fin-like material? Sure. I think we've, we see here that it's not actually a material that's protruding from within the sample. It's actually something attached. Right. The spectra of that material, it's, it's organic. So, so for some reason here, we've got a piece of the human body that's attached itself to the exterior surface of the sample. So this is really interesting because the human body has two kinds of reactions to a foreign object. One was the more extreme case where it would encapsulate it in pus and transport it out. And the second one was where it would just encase it and have a minor inflammatory reaction. It seems here that some material from the human body has actually attached itself 
to the sample, which to me doesn't seem like either of those cases that Dr. Laird described. Usually you would reject it, but in this case it's actually it's, it's, embracing it. Yeah, it's, it's attached itself. Very interesting. Does it look like it's attached to the sample in any unusual way? To me it doesn't. The team continues to analyze the object for other anomalies. We're getting a good sense here of what the elements are within this edge. I see iron, oxygen, and carbon, and then... Sulfur. As you can see, the highest peak is carbon. The carbon and the oxygen he thought were contaminants. Uh, all of these would be found um, in body fluids, for example. But if, you, if we remove those, it we're left with iron. Iron. So it looks like it's probably iron. Right. So we've just panned over to a third area of the sample, right? Where we thought it had that black coloration. There are our peaks. Wow. They're kind of very similar. So the phosphorus is, um, there's more phosphorus in this area. For now, uh, I'm really not seeing anything too unusual. Um, basically, we have a, a, a small piece about a one to two millimeters in diameter uh, made of iron. In fact, it is medically possible for foreign objects to migrate inside the body and emerge at points far from where they entered, sometimes years later. My job as a scientist is just to look at the data and see if there's anything unusual. And in this case, there, there really isn't anything yet that has surprised us. My job is to rain on their parade, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to do that again. Ted believes this implant is an iron pellet and that its emergence is a natural occurrence. We could debate this case all night long and debate this case forever if we want to, but the fact is it was a traumatic event in his life. You took it to the lab, you ran your tests, and we found out that at least one test was very, very strange, that there was actual human tissue, protein, growing from within a fracture in the object itself. You know, I know it was pretty exciting to uh, have an opportunity to surgically remove what we thought might be some sort of uh, foreign object or alien implant. Uh, as far as I can tell, after all of our scientific tests of it, uh, it just looks like simply a small fragment of oxidized iron. What about the tissue growing out of the metal? We just don't have that technology here on Earth, so therefore I say this is beyond our technology. It's quite possibly alien. We've taken technology and applied it to ufology. Rarely is that done in this field. The bunker will always say to you, you haven't proven the existence of a UFO, as if you've got to produce the UFO on the table for it to be true. But on the other hand, the ufologist will say, well, you haven't disproven the UFO. Show me something that says this is anything but a UFO. And you know what? We have not found one thing to disprove that there's an extraterrestrial presence affecting us on planet Earth, interfering with our lives, and traveling through our skies. What began on a lonely New Hampshire highway in 1961, a couple allegedly chased down and abducted by aliens continues to this day. Hundreds of new stories of alien abduction are reported every year, but the full accounts of what happens during these abductions may never be fully known. Are we really being watched by beings not of this world? Is it possible that other beings are leaving behind evidence of their visits to our planet? Or do these disturbing stories come not from the darkness of outer space, but from the dark corners of our own imagination? <laughs>